Hey fellow personality enthusiasts, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we're talking about a previously undiscussed topic, which is the MBTI boiling point. And what is that, you might imagine? Well, first of all, imagine that every single personality type has a boiling point, which means that, you know, up to a certain temperature, you'll stick to your normal personality style. For example, you will show up as introverted in general in most settings up to a point. So what I mean with the boiling point is most people have a point where they flip the switch, right? So they, they start to basically they can't handle the pressure or the stress that's put on their system and they switch to the opposite style, right? So an example, have you ever felt like, despite the fact that you knew you were a judging type, that your life had gotten too messy. You'd started to miss out on paying bills on time. You'd started forgetting about dates and appointments. You started showing up late to meetings, right? Well, the personality boiling point is just that. The truth is, well, you might just be a judging personality type. The truth is, you've hit a point where your life has just gotten so busy that the part of your brain that organizes things just cannot keep up anymore. And the same thing can happen for each of the 16 personalities. So let's dive into how the boiling point can show up in each of the different personality types. Starting with introvert. So the introverted script is to take things slowly and steadily, methodically, approaching tasks, methodically breaking it down and thinking about how they want to do it. Thinking before they speak, the introverts try to follow a steady and consistent tempo in how they approach tasks. But when you start to feel like there's just too much happening, where it's too much stimulation, too many things on your to-do list, too many tasks that you need to take care of, what can happen for the introvert is they can switch to a more stressed and extroverted style in which they amp up the speed, amp up the pressure. I gotta do it faster, I gotta rush, I gotta you know, do this and then I gotta do that and I gotta run there and I gotta get to that. And so what you end up experiencing is you start speaking more emotionally and more enthusiastically or more energetically. You start seeming more agitated. You seem to be a bit more frazzled. You scan around your environment a lot. But what you want to notice is this is a stressed thing, right? So you're doing this under stress. Well, an extrovert does this and enjoys it and it's a normal pace for them and something that feels completely fine to them. Uh, you, you are stressed by this, right? You, you're rushing it. You're trying to do everything, right? Now, the personality boiling point can show up similarly for an extrovert. So basically what you'll find is the extroverts also have a boiling point. The problem is that boiling point is much higher, right? So even an extrovert can eventually hit the point where things just go too fast, right? So perhaps you've sometimes hung out with or dated another extroverted type, right? So you're an extrovert and you date another extrovert and you know in the beginning it was super fun, right? And you were talking so fast and things were happening so much, right? We were doing so much. You were going to different places. You had so much excitement, so much enthusiasm. But to some point you're like, oh my God, this is too much, too fast. Oh, I, I can't handle all of this. That's too much happening, I, I, you know, right? So you start hitting a point where it gets too much, right? So either of you, some one of you has to put in the brakes and has to start saying, wait a second, hang on there. <laughs> we can't do all of this, right? We, we won't have time for this. This will be too much. This is way more than what we can handle, right? So we got to slow down and pace ourselves, right? So somebody has to play the introvert in this situation, right? Now, the truth is even an intuitive personality type can find themselves at a point where a conversation gets too deep and abstract and too complex that they simply become too confused, right? So what can happen is when you're an intuitive and you're engaged in an intuitive conversation and suddenly, you know, the other person is just going into topics that you've never talked about before, there's too much novelty and too many confusing words that you don't understand, right? And even as an intuitive, you'll eventually maybe hit the point where you meet your match. Some person that knows something that you don't know and some person that is able to talk about this in a way that you can't keep up with, right? And so the boiling point 
might be here that you start getting a bit annoyed and a bit frustrated. Get to the point. Why are you talking so indirectly? Can you not be more specific? Can you not give examples? Can you not explain what you mean with this word? And why are you switching subjects so often? Can you not stick to the point? I didn't really understand what you were saying. Can you not go back to your original point and explain it better to me so that I can keep up with what you're saying, right? So that's the boiling point for an intuitive, right? So. Um, this all depends on your level of intuition and uh, your level of strength of intuition and in which specific context, right? Because perhaps you're very intuitive when it comes to topics that you're very experienced and you can go into a lot of uh, complexity in a specific topic or in a specific area simply because you studied it academically or you spent a lot of time working with it, right? But perhaps you find yourself in an outside your normal intuitive context in a new unfamiliar setting, right? And in this situation, you might start to notice these kinds of issues, right? Because that part of your intuition is not yet developed. The part that manages that topic or hobby or interest doesn't really know anything yet, right? So in that sense, you got to start building from the beginning up, right? You got to start doing it more slowly. The lesson with the boiling point is work through things slowly. Get from one point to the other. Don't try to overwhelm your system too much and recognize that you have a limit. Similarly, a sensing type might hit a point where they feel that things are getting too firm, we're getting too shallow, too superficial, we're going too much into specifics and examples right now, we're getting too nitty gritty, right? So even as a sensing type, you might hit a point where you're listening to somebody talk and explain a procedure and uh, the ins and outs of how to perform a project and all the steps necessary to make it happen, right? And at some point you just get bored, right? Even as a sensing type, you can get bored by these kind of conversations and feel like, okay, we need something new in here, we need some chaos in here, we need some change in here, we need some novelty, we need some complexity. Can we not look at this from a later perspective? Can we not uh, you know, go outside the box? Can we not you know, do it, approach it a bit differently, right? And so the boiling point here is simply just realizing when you know, um, you're starting to compromise too much and go get too specific about something and you're starting to miss out on the overview. You're realizing that, hey, while we're talking about all these trees, we're missing the entire forest, right? So we have a bigger problem that we need to address and you're recognizing this, you know that the organization has to you know, address some bigger issue, but they're so focused on the processes, the specifics, the steps necessary, and they're not really taking the bigger issue seriously, right? As a feeling type, uh, perhaps you notice that when a feeling type is too hurt or too you know, disappointed in somebody or feel like they've been working really hard, you know, at some point they hit the point where you know, their emergency breaks takes over and the system goes, you, know, you need to look out for yourself, right? And here the feeling types can start behaving unusually cold and coolly, right? You find yourself being very logical about things. When you used to be more naive and innocent, nowadays you find yourself being a lot more critical and a lot more skeptical. Does this person really mean that? Can I trust them? Are they serious? Will they really have my back if I do this? Will they really be there? Do they like they say they will? Can I trust them to be true to their word, right? Like these are things that happen when you hit your boiling point as a feeling type. You notice that now uh, I have to take a step back here. I am getting too involved in something. And many feeling types also recognize this. They're, I know a lot of feeling types that say, oh, I could never work in charity organizations or nonprofits or animal shelters because I'd get too involved. I'd get, I'd get so upset with all the suffering and all the bad problems that are happening. So I need to stay out of that for my mental health and sanity, right? Similarly, even a thinking type can hit a point where a conversation gets way too logical and way too cold, right? Because the truth is even thinking types need warmth, need love, need passion, need you know, to know that you care about something. And so, for example, if you're a thinking type and you're hanging out with another thinking type and they're dissecting every argument that you make and they question everything and they disagree with everything you say and they always see another perspective or challenge things, right? And if that happens to you as a thinking type, at some point you might be like, is this person against me? Is this person upset with me? Are they like trying to be mean? Are they trying to hurt my feelings? What are they trying to do here? Why are they constantly seeing the problems in everything that I say? Why don't they ever agree with me? Why don't they ever 
listen to me? Why don't they ever just nod and understand and accept me, right, and what I say? So even thinking types can hit that point where it gets too much, right? Like they're not machines. They need, like anyone else, sometimes a little bit of emotional validation. And like I mentioned before, you know, I know a lot of judging types that, you know, take on too many projects that, you know, they're, they're leaders in organizations, they have managerial positions at work, they have kill children that they have to take care of, right? And when all these things happen, it's easy for you as a judging type to just drop some balls once in a while. And that's completely normal and completely fine to do. The truth is nobody can be on top of everything. You can't always be perfectly on time. You can't always, you know, uh, have your house clean and perfect and shiny. You know, you can't always have everything in order. Those that have perfect lives where everything is organized and are neat and tidy are usually the people with the least to do, right? Those are the people that, you know, don't have kids, don't have responsibilities. And so you have to be realistic with yourself. A part of the boiling point is also holding yourself to consistent standards and objective measurements, right? So instead of comparing yourself to everyone else and wanting to be perfect in everything else that everyone else does, instead of trying to uh, constantly live up to some impossible standard, focus on what's right in front of you and recognize and be realistic about how much you can handle relative to a much challenge that you're faced with. Give yourself a slack budget. What is a slack budget? A slack budget is you know, things that you recognize aren't that important, you know, like here it can be, you know, as a feeling type recognizing that, you know, well, I don't have to care for everyone. It's most important that I care for something, right? I don't have to be involved in every project, but most important, I show what I care about, show my passion in something that is important to me, you know, and as an extrovert, you know, it's not that I have to be fast and uh, speedy and swift and uh, active in every scenario, you know, as long as I have and do it in these and these situations, I can rest and relax and take things more slowly in other areas, right? Like recognizing, you know, a slack budget is like, yeah, if that thing doesn't work out, if I miss out on that deadline, if I fail to meet that, that's okay. I did a lot of other things, right? I managed to do a lot of other tasks. And true this, you know, people that are and live highly active lives of flow have quite a large slack budget. When people are very busy, have a lot of projects, are very involved, and spend a lot of time putting a lot of effort into different things, the truth is they always have a slack budget. And when we look at these people and we go, wow, how does that person do so much? How are they able to do and be on top of so many things? The truth is they're not. They always have slack. They always have people to help them out with things. They delegate, they prioritize, and they tell themselves, you know, that's important, but that's not important. That's a little bit important, but that's less important. And, you know, if they miss out on things or if they're not able to keep track of things, they forgive themselves for it and they move on and they focus on the next time. And the same goes for like a perceiving type because the perceiving types are known to be great multitaskers. They're known to be very adaptable. They know they are known to be spontaneous, good at improvising. But you know, what if you're solving fires every single day? What if constantly there's new things happening and you're just not able to keep up with all the change and all the different things that come up on your plate, right? Well, yeah, that's what it's like, you know, you can't, you know, even if you're a professional juggler, if somebody tosses you a curveball every t minute, you know, like you're going to miss a few balls and you're going to drop a few things. And yeah, that's the point of the video. The boiling point, recognize the boiling point, recognize the fact that you have a limit, recognize that you're not a superhuman in your dominant functions or dominant personality traits. Recognize that every single person you meet has a limit and hold people to fair limits and standards. And when you meet somebody and they say, they, they seem like they're, not really able to, you know, be as extorted as you expect an extrovert to be, you know, give them some slack and assume that, hey, maybe they're more extorted in other settings. Maybe they're more outgoing in other settings. You know, this person told me that they were a feeling type, but they seem quite cool and quite logical. Well, perhaps they have other areas where they are very much more in tune with their feelings. And maybe I'm not seeing the full context. Maybe in this situation, the person is more cold because perhaps they're an introverted feeler and they haven't warmed up to me yet, right? Context is everything and just holding yourself to fair standards is key to flow and balance and being happy and fulfilled regardless of your MBTI personality type.